projects coming along, guys. TYT show in the works. Tell the truth, Jenk part one is out. As you've seen, if you haven't already, go go give it a look. How do I zoom in here? Can I do it with, with hotkeys? Plus, plus. Ooh, it worked. Holy crap. Um, You've already seen this one. Look in the description for a link or just check it out on my YouTube channel. And uh, Trunk 2 here. I've been thinking half hour. Then as I've been getting closer, I'm like, oh, this is 33 minutes. And then I added about three, three to four. Yeah, not quite four. Almost four minutes of stuff last uh, two days ago. So I, that's, that's one of the reasons I'm glad I delayed it by two weeks, or at least gave myself to mid May, uh, before the next delay. No, I don't think there will be another delay, but yeah. So I've, I've expanded it a little bit with some stuff that I think is relevant. It's kind of hard cause I like to sit on things for a while. And then I, cause the music choices are a little bit tricky and I don't quite know if there's this one bit here where it's just sort of a, an abrupt interruption, but it, it kills the flow, but it's also so sort of interesting i don't know i can't tell I, so i that's why i need time to sort of sit on it because sometimes part of the way i make decisions about this stuff is i follow my instinct with the net at choice then i watched a bunch of times obviously you're always just constantly watching edits and then i don't watch it for a while because i'm working on something else and i go back and i go and i and i watch it and i go oh yeah that works it's been like a week it's enough time for the kind of for it to die off in my brain a little bit and see how i react to it next time so pretty ordinary nothing too exciting about that one so yeah let me think where are we maybe we should just jump in and i'll just start talking about stuff so what you've seen already is this clip which went out last week 982 views pretty exciting hold on guys let's get these uh let me let me feed the shrimp here real fast hold on fucking fucking employees when are we going to replace them with robots Ugh. makes me so upset here you go pieces of shit we're a family we're a family, okay? Make me money. I love them. I love those little. I love those shrimps so much. It's just, it's just so. We're like a family. It's so nice. Um, so you've seen this. I didn't. Oh shit! I didn't get it to land in the shot. Oh well, you'll still see a bunch walking around real soon once they get a, once they get a whiff of it. Once they spend their paycheck on their stomachs. So. Uh, yeah, this clip was out. And oh, I'm touching the springs on this thing. Uh, this clip has been out. So it starts this way. Jenk seems to have learned that paying people properly would have been cheaper than hiring professional goons to help bully them into submission. My guess is that... All right, that's where Jenk talks for the first time on that one. So what we have, what we're about to do is watch... And then we get into the uh, anti-worker law firms. Now, I don't go into like a whole ton of detail, like, look at this law, but I don't know how much more detail you need to see that they, they're they they're they're the ones that they used. Their TYT's law firms are in the union, are part of the union avoidance industry that makes a lot of money. I have no idea if TYT spent money for consulting for the union drive. I'm not claiming that they did. I think they probably did. I would bet that they did. It seems odd that they wouldn't. Uh, but... Um, I do think that it's fair to say that the uh, Young Turks members and uh, people who pay them money should know if they do how much they spent. Like, that's something you should disclose. If I was given TYT money for per, uh, a place ostensibly fighting for progressive causes, I wouldn't want my money going to the like the anti-worker industry, these ghouls that are part of take that, uh, that their their purpose is to take away rights from workers who are trying to get to slightly improve their working conditions so they can keep producing fucking money for the bot like that would be something they think they sh they should disclose they definitely hired them unless they're working for free which is highly unlikely so uh let's see let's hopefully this switches over here all right so what that is is i have us we're gonna watch this white chunk here what is this one minute and so we're gonna see an extra 90 seconds I'm going to see what, oh, okay. Hold on. So it starts like right here, basically. I had to turn off these sound effects for it to go. What is all this black and white chunky bits? You might have already guessed. I, I was curious if people might be like, whoa, whoa. So this will answer that question. And then you've seen this. I have learned that paying people properly would have been cheaper than higher. So he's referring to, uh, not I'm not saying he's saying he's learned that about his own company, because he certainly didn't behave that way when he, um, busted the union in his business but it seems like he's referring to uh a lesson he might have learned himself and so if you want to get a little bit more context about what i'm what we're getting at with jank is there's this the story is about starbucks 
Now, we don't start with that. We start with a little bit right here, but... Um, yeah, so look, this is actually what happened. This this board here, right here, this is what happened to the union. Why the union got started? Not why. It's not. But I I plotted to it. I wanted. I like deliberately was like, I don't like the way I'm being treated. And I know these other people who I work with are really cool, and I like them, and we're buds, and we're all not feeling great. And so maybe I should like wake up that union drive that uh, they had attempted like a year or so prior, because I'd heard about that a little bit. So I plotted. I'm sitting in the chair where it happened. It wasn't Nancy Pelosi. Oh, hold on. She's caught. No, I'm, I'm not going to do that one again. I, I, I got to. Maybe if that bit works over and over, I'll try it some more. I'll, I'll whip it back out. But I'm not feeling that confident right now. So here we go. We're going to hit play. Having heard about the 2018 exchange with IATSE, I knew we had a contact and I plotted to revive the effort in the spring of 2019. Conversations resumed in early summer and gained momentum until we scheduled our first meeting a week before Jenk announced. The feeling of converting solidarity into action is one I'll never forget as long as I live. And it's one capitalist ideologues like Jenk and his hand Jack are incapable of experiencing in their sad, vacant souls. It is a barren wasteland, riddled with fire and ash and dust. In 2023, remarking on Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz withholding pay from unionizing workers, Anna bores into how such a tactic functions to intimidate others. And sadly, the, the union busting is effective because it, it dissuades other stores from organizing. Jenk pillories his fellow union buster as a faux progressive. Mm -hmm. And remember when he briefly considered running for president, he was painted as a left winger, as someone on the left, and they would use the word progressive for him. And slams him for self-immolating. Way to destroy your brand, well played. Yeah, Starbucks, way to destroy your brand. <clears throat> a bit earlier, Jenk seems to have- Boom, won. so uh, that slap is a callback to a couple, there's two other moments earlier where there's like, where Jenk's comes in off screen and just whacks something and it blows up. That's just using um, After Effects particle thingy or whatever that breaks stuff into particles and you get all these little physics controls. It's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, it's extrusion. I don't know. I'm not even that great at it. I just fuck around with it until it looks kind of funny because it all it, it floated off and I was like, I don't want it to float. And then I was like, I like how it floats off. That's cool. Okay, yeah. So that's the bit there. Um, maybe we'll just keep watching it because we could. We, I could switch over to the YouTube channel. Although we'll just do it here in Premiere since it's might even be a little bit updated. And then, so what's on YouTube is this bit here, this whole chunk up to the end of here. So none, none of this you're about to see, you haven't already seen on YouTube. So, uh, but yeah, maybe I'll just make a couple comments first before we do that. I have this yellow dot thing. I would love some feedback from people if you think, maybe not. I mean, go ahead, give me feedback whenever you like. But I'm curious when I'm finally done with the entire project, if that yellow dot is going to... Uh, makes sense there's more you'll see a lot more of it in the next big chunk in the in chunk two which is going to be like 35 36 minutes or so uh because the whole point of uh talking about intimidation is it starts from when anna is is expressing um dismay and frustration about the intimidation campaign that people had done against uit and that's what got me to look up Jenk's story about intimidation. I didn't know. I mean, I was just like, I'm going to look for the when they're talking. I want to see what, like, what, what else could it be? Because I know that they believed, because TYT used this word in their tweet, that it's a ploy to intimidate in one of their big tweets. That's part of their re response to IATSE. Bullshit. Not true. Made up. But, so I was like, but I, if I'm going to be claiming that that's not true, I should at least do my due diligence and see if there's other instances of intimidation. And so I found Jenk's talking about intimidation via his campaign where his uh, cars were broken into and there were people following around like his campaign office and stuff, which take it as, as good faith. I'm not questioning any of that to be true or false or, you know, I don't, I'm not saying any of that's false or anything. So that that's included. And I use the yellow dot to sort of like mark that as a thing that you see on screen. And then uh, Anna has her intimidation event where she was taking lots of incoming fire. I really hope she got a raise for having to take all this extra stress on from the campaign that, that she was placed into. She was put into a pretty difficult position by having to, do her job which is already somewhat emotionally taxing anyway uh while jenks running for congress so like which it just a a aggravated 
and escalated the intensity of that. But anyway, so she got uh, accused of uh, trying to dock somebody, the person who was releasing all these old video snippets of Jank that were making him look pretty bad. And honestly, there's so much more. I've done probably more looking into it than anybody. And I have some stuff picked out for like a piece of this whole film that you're going to see eventually in the timeline somewhere down the way. Wait, I cleaned it up. Look how clean that is. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. It was such a mess before. But somewhere around here, th this is the documentary that I still have to do. These are just pieced out. Oh my God, that's Kyle Kalinske. Is he going to come back? Um, he's he, he's he's probably the most prominent of the lefty commentators. Eh, Sam Cedar's probably more more prominent than Kalinske. Although I would like to see Sam Cedar go at Kyle Kalinske in a MMA fight. Jank Uger versus Joe Rogan, title card, or the main one, undercard, Klinsky v. Cedar. And then uh, Sahil Habibi versus the Vanguard Boys. And then, um, of course, I've always, my dream matchup is uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin versus Michael Beschloss. So, but this is all stuff I've sort of done for the next ma massive piece. <laughs> It's, there's so much, here. Uh, it's so, it's so fucking, it's, it's just, it's, it's never going to end. So that's the stuff I'm asking you to say. Oh yeah, I was just asking you for money or before. If you, if you care to support, this has been three years of work and I'm completely unemployable. On top of that, my wrists are fucked up, which even makes it even hard for me to go do fucking even driving jobs. Um, so, okay. Sorry. I was, I was just having, having joke thoughts there. Okay. So, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm getting, getting lost. So Anna had her intimidation event. Uh, and so I have the yellow dot that shows up for that. So I have like the three yellow dots and then it, it's, uh, what I, one of the things that I was working on the last couple of weeks, and this is partially why I delayed it was because I, I knew that I had a, like to kind of return to that event. Cause the whole reason why I go from March 4th, 2020, the day after the, uh, super Tuesday where Jank lost to that's the one where Anna's saying like, you know, and she was upset that Jank had said, you should support Christy Smith because he's better than the Republican. And so she was like, oh, I can't do that guy knowing what she, knowing what I know now and all that stuff. And then that's what forces the rewind all the way back to, okay, well then Jenk got intimidated. Oh, Anna got intimidated. And now we're back at the beginning of the campaign. And now we kind of get into the Bernie Sanders stuff. That's all in the first 46 minutes that you've already seen. So that's where those yellow dots come into play. Cause I'm trying to be incredibly fair and show the context of what it was that uh, animated this or like the uh, of the context of which union busting occurred, obviously, but also like I'm trying to I'm I'm challenging their credibility in a very direct like way with this entire project. Although just to be clear, when I worked there, I never saw any reason to suspect or, or question any honesty or credibility about any other story. Not not even a little bit. I wasn't looking for that. If I was even thinking about it, it's not just not something that was on my mind. But because I'm an original source on this and I have all this evidence uh check out uh my sources post um it's under it's in the description or at least certainly in if i don't remember it'll be in the it's in the description of the um you know the big the, the actual video uh, 46 minute one and uh, actually i might even be in this in the community post check on youtube there's a community post of some stuff i've been putting a little bit of stuff up there so and uh, you can see all the tweets you can see all the videos you can look at it, all the stuff there took forever to do it's really tedious <laughs> And uh, when it's up. And so for because I, I know the truth about this, I'm sitting in the chair where the plot occurred, where, where I decided to unfreeze the union drive. <laughs> I knew that it wasn't true that uh, the union organizing started after Jenk, uh instituted or uh, announced he's running for Congress. So anyway, that's the yellow dot stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I think it comes back. Jank. I think it works. Pillory's his fellow union buster oh. as a faux progressive. Yeah, this one's funny. And I remember like this. when he briefly considered running for president? He was painted as a left winger, as someone on the left. Real ironic, there, buddy. What's the date? I think the date is this. I don't have the uh, credit uh, on on screen yet. That's something I'm going to be doing real soon, anyway. But um, let me see here. March 28th, 2023. So here's the, actually, we could even watch the full story. I have the entire thing right here. The National Labor Relations Board has filed a complaint. Against so just to be clear, this is the footage. This is a 
18 minute video from their YouTube channel of them uh, discussing the story about Starbucks withholding tips and raises from the workers. So it's not okay to withhold tips and raises from workers, right? That's a big no, no. We don't like that. And neither does TYT. And Starbucks for preventing their unionized stores from accepting tips through credit cards. Now, this was something that workers had been fighting for at Starbucks for quite some time. But that policy alone, preventing these unionized workers from being able to get tips through credit cards, um, has cost these workers a tremendous amount of money. You won't even believe how much. I'm going to get to those details in just a second. But here is how this all played out, okay? The complaint said this, Starbucks Workers United has made credit card tipping a core demand of their union campaign. But last year, Howard Schultz, who's of course the interim CEO of Starbucks, uh, announced that the feature would only be rolling out to non-unionized stores. The union filed charges- Well, that shot right there, sorry. That's just one reason I don't like doing anything in public. Good God, what a what a violation. Against uh, Starbucks with the NLRB alleging that it was a union busting tactic. And now, luckily, the NLRB has officially backed the Starbucks workers uh, and Starbucks workers united specifically uh, in their complaint. So the NLRB not only demanded that Starbucks release credit card tipping in all of their stores, including the stores that have voted to unionize, but also pay back the workers uh, for all the uh, tips that they lost out on as a result of this union busting tactic. By the way, how much did it cost workers at some of these stores? Well, according to More Perfect Union, in some stores, credit card tipping has added three to four dollars an hour on workers' paychecks. Yeah, uh, this was not at all subtle. Right? Seriously. Sometimes no, you not. see a story and you're like, well, is that union busting or is it not? It's around the edges. Let's see what the National Labor Relations Board says, right? This one's not at all around the edges, okay? That's robbing those workers of all of that money in all of those stores that are unionizing and they're punishing them on purpose. Yes, they are. Now, I, I was kind of hoping she would talk more. I haven't watched this in a long time. That she would get into the raises and stuff. They just didn't give them raises. And uh, so the, the tips... TYT workers weren't working for tips from customers, so obviously that doesn't apply in an equal like in an equal sense. But the, to try to coerce, to try to increase leverage, to try to put emotional uh, and cause material harm on, on their workers, Starbucks intentionally withheld money that these people had earned, which is something that uh, Jenk clearly seems to think is a bad thing. And they're talking about how the NLRB agreed. Now, I, I think this is an interesting point, and this is not in the video because I, I bookmarked this, as you can see it. But Cenk seems to be referring, I mean, he's an intelligent person. I think his brain works somewhat well still. Let's let's assume that he's remembering his own experience because he's got an insider's look at what it's like being a union buster, right? He, that's, a, that's a unique POV, you know? Maybe you should uh, fund this documentary that uh, I'm making. We can, we can actually dig into it with from an honesty perspective um, instead of having to read the tea leaves of, his, of what he says when he covers union stories on his own show. But he's like, sometimes there's edge cases. But this one's not subtle. So I think he would probably argue that his case wasn't really union busting. Sometimes you see a story and you're like, well, is that union busting or is it not? It's around the edges. Let's see what the National Labor Relations Board says, right? Yeah. This one's not at all around the edges, okay? That's robbing those workers. Yeah, taking robbing workers. Boy, that would be something that really, really calls out for justice, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it, everybody? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? I've, I've fallen into a vamping loop. Here we go. Back to, I'm switching it up fast here. I'm trying to be, trying to be professional, I'm trying to be, look, okay. And then here's a story in these times, as you've seen, the Young Turks Union fight gets nastier with charges of retaliatory firing, which is far more harmful than even just withholding the, the, the three to $4 an hour tip, bonus tip, but that's not a bonus, it's earned money. And withholding raises. What? What is going on here? How could that possibly have happened? Hold on, hold on. And then he said, now, let's wait and see what the NLRB says. Well, now the TRT one was settled. There's one that went on for a while over the firing, and then there was another one that went on a little bit shorter. Another person I really want to get on the podcast is this uh, guy named Matt Brunig. He, uh, he and his wife do a podcast or something, and he's like a labor wage theft guy. Not wage theft. I mean, wage, uh, sorry, just uh, 
slip of the tongue there. Um, you know, labor rights kind of organizer dude. He's done some stuff on YouTube and, and shit. And it seems like a really nice, nice guy. Uh, and so like one of the reasons I'd like to uh, have Matt Brunig on, and I'm going to reach out to him once I get this next thing out is um, to kind of go through this stuff. Cause I got to admit, I don't fully understand all of it. It's a lot of very, um, and by the way, that guy, Matt Brunig is representing Jared, uh, uh, from the Stephen Crowder show known as not gay Jared in his, when he was on the air, but he's having a major issue with Stephen Crowder f- with employment. stuff. So I'm like, Oh buddy, buddy, you want to help out a homie? <laughs> What's your rate? <laughs> I can afford 25 cents a minute. If you're, if uh, that would be a lot of money actually. Um, so this is, these are TOTs and LRB cases. So I'd like to get uh, some, an expert on who can kind of jump in on this. Here's that, here's that law firm, Mitchell Soberberg and up that represents the AMPTP which is uh, something that you've seen in the in the video that we're about to watch too. And so I think this might be the one where it's threats and promises of benefits and all this stuff is what generated the, do I have it? Is it close? I wasn't planning on showing it. Right here, the coercive stuff, this this one here that you've seen. So this this thing was mailed out to me. I, I just wonder, I'm, I've got to think Dave Kohler is the one that wrote this up. And he and I were pretty close buddies, actually. I really miss Dave. I wish we could still be friends and play tennis again. And I could lose to chess. I think I beat him maybe twice. Maybe twice. Dave, was it once or twice? Leave a comment below. Um, I felt so proud. He's really good at chess. Uh, and uh, I bet he's the one that did this, that sent this out. It was probably just like, fuck, we got to do one of these to Hank. Hank is nuts. Hank's going to do something with this stuff. We're not going to tell the audience. I'm not, by the way, I'm not trying to, you know, Dave doesn't make editorial decisions. So, yeah. So this was generated because of TYT's uh, NLRB case here that we're looking at, I think. I think this is the one. So it'd be great to go over this with a, with a, with a journalist. One other thing that's really weird is that the, this law firm name changed. The lawyers are the same. So it's weird that it updated in the system. That's another thing. Because, like, I, I saw this. I was like, wait a minute. That's not that's not Louis Brisbois and, 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 and whatever the other one is. So... I noticed that that changed. It must be the lawyer, either the firm itself changed their name or somehow there's some kind of consolidation thing. The, the, maybe the lawyers changed firms, but like, yeah, I don't know. That's weird. So, um, yeah. So back into Premiere Pro. Let's see if we can switch over easily. Did that work? I think that worked. Um, yeah, that's Jenk. This, this is the raw stuff. Remember, this is not in the video here. This is Jenk and... Oh yeah, so here he is. This is this is this is what is in the video. Let's just watch up to it. Punishing them on purpose. Remember, Howard Schultz, who of course is the founder of Starbucks, has now served as CEO several different times, came back to fight the unions. Mm-hmm. And remember when he briefly considered running for president, he was painted as a left winger, as someone on the left, and they would use the word progressive for him. I mean, could you imagine? A guy running for president who has union busting on his record, pretending to be a progressive? I think Jenkins is far more progressive than Howard Schultz. So let's be clear. I don't think they're the same. Howard Schultz is a massive billionaire. Three plus billions is my guess. I don't really know. But yeah, Jenkins is not at that level whatsoever. So, And that's okay. But nevertheless, the spirit of, of Wharton Business School graduates endures. Uh, let's just see what this one is. I don't actually know what's in this uh, these bookmarks. But obviously, I, I made some notes here that are... My opinion is even if they quote unquote win on busting this union, they still lose. They, they... Okay, maybe I'll put that in in the second, in the third big chunk. <laughs> like, isn't that what was so obvious from the beginning? How was it not obvious to everybody in the world? Or how was it only obvious to everybody except Jank, the business genius from Wharton School of Vampires? Even if you guys pull it off. You're still a fucking union buster at that point. You've still just took a giant cat shit on your brand. It's like taking, you're pooping out cat poop and then just rubbing it all over your brand. All right, let's, let's, let's move over here. We, let me know if you want to do more of the stuff where we kind of go through some of these videos. I'm a little bit nervous about taking too much from their fight. I mean, I know I'm doing commentary. I think this is obviously legitimately fair use, but I, I can't just sit here and watch. TYT video after TYT video in a way, but you know, this might be entertaining. Let me know if you'd like to see more of this stuff and we can maybe work, work into it a little bit more. Cause I am going to be doing more podcasting after I get chunk two out. So, uh, even if they lose, even if you quote unquote win, yeah, nobody won. The only people who won were the union busting law firms, man. 
the only people who, and they should have told you not to do the union busting. Why am I talking directly to Jenk? If they had Jenk's interest at heart, they would have said, okay, we're, go, we're, we're, we're definitely okay with trying to destroy your workers' lives. We'll definitely insult them. If Oh, you're running for Congress? Great. Let's make, let's do, let's use that. And it's Nancy Pelosi. Maybe they came up with that. Maybe Jenk came up with that. I have no idea. They'll definitely do it because they're the worst guys in America. But if you're paying that much money for their advice, the only rational advice, even from those evil ghouls, is, dude, you're the TYT guy. You can't bust this. And you're running for Congress right now, right? Yeah. So your high-profile congressional race and your entire career is built on the idea that workers need to stand up for themselves. Maybe our advice, and we're going to charge you several thousand dollars because we've thought about this for 20 minutes. Actually, we've thought about this for 20 nanoseconds. Our advice, those people, their brains don't work that fast. They're addled by wealth. Why am I, trying, why am I, why am I parsing that? Our advice is don't do it. I know we're union busting, but don't do it. Like a concrete, you know, hey, concrete company, I need concrete. And you go, well, what do you need concrete for? Well, I want to cover my my baby's crib in concrete. And you go, well, we would sell, we would make money doing that. But we're, we don't, our advice is you shouldn't do that. <laughs> why, did I, why did I come up with that? That's fucking morbid and weird. Um, this blasty chunk here, by the way, look at the shadows below. Are you impressed by that? That's the stuff that you can help fund on Patreon. Cause I, I, there's a lot of parts of this whole movie where I want to add shadows to things. It's just, let me look at it. I gotta go in and I gotta make a fucking, uh, graphic up here in essential graphics panel. I gotta make a shape. I gotta put a Gaussian blur on it. There's a transform effect above it for some reason. Self immolate. Oh yeah. Cause it's, cause it moves around. It's him. For so I use the word self immolate and I had no idea that this is a bit more serious stuff that there'd be, High profile self immolation in the news. Aaron Bushnell, the American military guy, service member who showed up uh, outside, was it the Israeli embassy? Very traumatic, very horrifying, very sad that that's where things get. And uh, it's, it's, it's probably the most extreme protest tactic you could imagine. And and um, God, what a what a what a thing! And so I'm a little bit nervous that people might have issue with me using that phrase. I hope it doesn't come off that I'm trying to like use it lightly, but I am using it certainly. I don't know. I don't know. Cause, cause I want to honor how, how fucking horrible. And then another guy did self immolation outside the Trump trial. Uh, he had a whole manifesto. So it was kind of like corporate conspiracy stuff, but then he just starts relating it to like the Simpsons and other things. And I'm not sure what, what happened. I know he was still alive when they, when they got him away or when they got the fire out and took him, took him off to the hospital. They probably arrested him. He probably, probably like handcuffed him at the hospital. No, he's fucking cops. So this bit comes in and slams him for self-immolating. Way to destroy your brand. Well played. Yeah. Starbucks. Way to destroy your brand. <clears throat> A bit earlier. So listen to the slap. See this right here? This one? See that little little peak right there? That's the, that's the landing. A bit earlier. Jenks. Um, but it doesn't make sense because this stuff doesn't actually land. It all floats off. A bit earlier. Jenks seems... But the other, the, I just, it's the exact same noise as I took from the first one. And it just, it just fits nicely. So let's watch it a bit earlier. Jenk seems to have learned that paying people properly would have been cheaper than hiring professional goons to help bully them into submission. My guess is that at some point, Starbucks is going to look back at this. Some other executive at Starbucks and go, yeah, it would have cost us this to give them decent wages. Right. And instead it cost us this like all the way up here yep. to try to fight them and make us and they, they're you're making yourself look like the worst guys in america the worst guys in america let's talk about it so i'm trying to do sort of the, that thing too with like color like this is like green is jenks like highlight color and orange is the toit union speaking or i use yellow uh, obviously so the, the default for highlighting tweets and stuff uh but like this and this here when he raises his hand up, I sort of was like, ah, it'd be kind of cool if it was like a magic spell or sort of like, oh, I could make that this glow. But I don't have something I want to learn it, and I would do it in DaVinci. DaVinci has really cool tracking, and get, that's where you get into sort of like the rotoscoping and the special effects of like basic special effects stuff. Because um, that's not where I'm at. I can do some pretty de reasonably good masking and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but nothing... I'm very more like a motion graphics sort of 2D. I'm good at the smooth, I'm good at like the, the, like some of that stuff. And a lot of this sort of 3D feeling stuff I do in Premiere, right? Using the basic 3D effect. 
uh, yeah, but like, you know, part, I kind of wanted to uh, sort of expand. So like someday in the future, when I'm making other documentaries, patreon.com slash winners and losers, I will, um, if we can get up to 20 bucks a month, I can do all the documentaries in the world. <laughs> but, um, I would like to add sort of graphics in a way that's a little bit more splashy like that. But at the same time, you got to be judicious about how you use your resources and whether or not that makes sense for the narrative and everything always comes back down to does this. Uh, add to the flow or take away from the flow. Even if it's superfluous, it might not be, you could argue, I mean, yeah, that depends on what, like if it still doesn't inhibit the flow, but it's just sort of a fun, not nothing that doesn't really mean anything. Not that you should do anything that means nothing because every moment's precious, but like if it's bad for the flow, it doesn't make sense. But if it might not make, like, cause these come back later, you see them again, the, this and the green. So the orange, this and the hot. Yeah. So, and then the fight them. So this is kind of building up towards something. I haven't worked it out and I know I'm not going to work it out until I get it into the timeline. And it's probably going to take a couple of different VO voiceover recordings for it. But the sort of overall kind of, I don't know if it's philosophical, but the whole notion that this is about a fight, that this is about an antagonistic relationship between a boss and a worker, a group of workers and a boss who clearly wants to maintain control over them because when you collectively organize and collectively negotiate, you're increasing your leverage, which means you're decreasing their leverage, which means that they feel less control. And to them, that feels like they're losing a fight to them. That feels like the antagonism is ramped up as you see in, or as you will see uh, in some of Jenks emails that we go through, he uses that phrase too, like fighting and stuff. And maybe someday we'll go through those emails bit by bit too. If people want to want to mention that too. But so like I'm kind of building towards the contrasting this inherent antagonism that when something goes well for the boss or like the workers' lives getting better is the perceived by the boss as his life getting worse to oversimplify. But that it's a fight that he's got to maintain control or he loses and the world i want to contrast that to a trust-based and i actually know some academics and some writers have done a lot of stuff about trust-based just like so i don't I'm, I'm i'm just kind of like that's my own thing <laughs> meaning i'm an idiot about that i'm not like referring to any kind of academic work but let like a a, a company a group of or, an organized group of people because under a socialist world, we'll have organized groups of people or all human beings organize themselves into clusters and do stuff with the, with the power, the scaling power of collective action. And it's just a matter about who gets to decide what, who, what happens with that, with that power, who wields that power. You need leaders, you need accountable leaders, you need democratically accountable leaders, um, which is why people like Jank and Howard Schultz hold on to this tyrannical dictatorship model of modern business of what it what it means to be a worker versus a boss and it's it shouldn't be a fight is my point in a trusting kind of relationship you'll still have tensions probably there'll still be disagreement you'll have need you'll have you'll need conflict resolution but i think i'm i want to head this movie towards the notion that it's not a fight or that sorry that this was a fight but that it shouldn't be a fight that we could build a world around the idea that of mutual self-interest and trust you know jane could Jenks company would be performing so much better if he understood the power that he's sitting on because who did he trust? Who did he trust in this whole story? Well, there's people who work for him that are revealed, not revealed, but like his, one of his main lieutenants, the, the hand of his company is this guy, Jack Gerard, who's he's been in public. He's, he's, he's made public statements. So I feel okay using his name. Um, he's got a corporate background more on that later and he trusted those law firms assuming that they advised him i mean he he hired them for his you know there's law firms so i'm assuming he was using he certainly wasn't trusting what a worker might tell him not that he would consult them and that's the nature of a union busting thing is that suddenly like a very stark line gets crossed so anyway i'm sorry i'm rambling here but i'm trying to like Eventually, we're going to see this word fight a lot more. Maybe not a lot, but I, I'm going to return to this in terms of contrasting it to the concept of a trust-based relationship because this whole movie is about power and whether you should even have to stand up for yourself like we had to do. And when you, when you, get, a, when you get your head around the conditions, the working conditions, especially mine, I think you're going to get in a, a sense for why 
we really fucking needed a, a union. Something had to be done because it was not okay. It goes, and they, they're, you're making yourself look like the worst guys in America. The worst guys in America. So he's referring to Starbucks uh, doing that to their workers. On a story about... I hate it when things are too collapsed. Uh, on a story about union busting a, a tactic, the one of... So here, we'll go back into this one. This is now, now we're back in the source monitor. This is the... Make us, and they, they're, you're making yourself look like the worst guys in America. In Referring to Starbucks, not himself, uh, because they withheld raises and tips from their workers. Well, Cenk withheld bonuses and raises from his workers. Well, raises, maybe, does the article say, but I don't want to, so, so it's grain of salt on that one, maybe if I'll, I'll you know. So here, let's see what he says after. Fact, I'm going to leave you oh. with this final statistic. It'll blow your mind. The NLRB has cited Starbucks with over 900 violations. That's a lot. Way more than TYT. TYT's only got two. And there's never been a news story on it. And there fucking should be. Uh, all right, let's keep The going. worst guys in America. Let's talk about it. Forgive the presumption, but I'm confident TYT's paying members would have preferred their money go into worker pockets and operating expenses. Even cushy executive salaries and lunch bucks. I was going to do like sushi emojis and like fancy, fancy people stuff because uh, executives, not that I know what TOT executives are reading. I did go out for sushi once with one of the executives uh, and I was just like, oh, I wish they would give me some of the money they're spending on this lunch. <laughs> I'm so fucking broke. Um, but yeah, I mean, well, you know, the executives get paid a lot more than the workers. That's, that's fine. I don't think TOT is like swimming in tons of money, though. It just to, to be fair, they're not Starbucks. Like they're not a billion, you know, they don't have that revenue. They're not selling a, a product you get addicted to. Coffee is such a great business because people's bodies are literally addicted. That's what this is right here. Mmm. Mmm. Addiction. Mm. Budgets. And then into the coffers of union busting law firms. Denying rights is a lucrative business. The Economic Policy Institute reports no that shadow. the union needs, avoidance needs a shadow. industry collects over 400 million annually with massive hourly and daily rates for consultants. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine making 2,500 fucking dollars in a day for helping scumbag CEOs? Now, I'm not saying I know TOT spent this kind of money at all. If they hired somebody for 20 minutes, they paid them probably $350 for a whole hour. And these are cheap. These are like low, 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 low. Like these, these, these numbers go way the hell up, I'm sure. This has got to be the bottom of the range. Um, but can you imagine making twenty five hundred dollars in a day? In four days, you make ten k. I know people often make a lot more than that, but holy crap! In this business, in this, and for the purpose of helping a, a rich guy who makes money off people's labor, deny the workers. The, the nigh workers on in his company their rights it's blows me blows my mind man it's amazing wow that's quite a day rate i made 173 dollars and four cents in a day so that's if you divide that by eight you'll get my hourly rate a little homework assignment for you that's just bad podcasting funding the this took fucking forever <laughs> not actually it wasn't that bad actually but it was a lot of steps um these all these little workers bouncing around and stuff with the labor th labor ta time talent labor jumping around the coercion balls flying about the the bosses flying around this is Skeletor's castle this is another one of those things that I'd like to like revisit this with with a better computer and like maybe add some depth somehow and somehow work on it but these graphics kind of are fun I, I hope people appreciate that <laughs> this, this this is like you're looking at three days of work right here getting these like different little layers each one is um so it's currently in a clip out here so it's like yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's in one of those editing codecs, so you can access it fast. MP4 is not a great... H.264 is not for good for editing. It, you can do plenty of editing with it, but if you're doing... doing, doing you, know, you know... Yeah. So it's just, this is a huge stack. Look at all this shit. Look at all this. This is inside one of those nice sequences. That's nuts. Let's see what that one is. Nope. Let's see what that one is. At the border between... The oh, this is a... Oh, this is the He-Man clip. At the oh, fuck, brown button. 
tear up a universe at the border between oh, the universe yeah so thank you he-man for letting me use your little video oh, let's not click on that oh, oh, oh. almost gave away some stuff there huh we wouldn't want to do that in a day Funding the legal infrastructure of capitalist oppression is probably not what most TYT viewers expected their money to do. Like this place, Mitchell Silverberg. So it comes out of the eyeball. If you look real careful, these eyeballs are green because green is the color of evil um, in this video, even though I think there's some times where I use green where it's not. But uh, it flies out of the eyeball, kind of. It's not super accurate. Yeah, it comes out, yeah, it comes out crosses over the face. And then I do some rotations. I could actually rotate it more, honestly, but uh, because maybe it needs a sound effect. Like this place, Mitchell, Silverberg, and Nup. They brag about representing the AMPTP, Hollywood's boss cabal, who viciously battle and demean the WGA, SAG-AFTRA, and IATSE. The writers, actors, and production unions that entertainment and media bosses like Jank would be utterly helpless without. That's TYT's law firm. One of them, anyway. See? Different company, same uh, lawyer here. So I don't know, it's a little weird on that one. So maybe it just updates as like the case gets goes forward or whatever. Uh, yeah. Like all bosses, the AMPTP benefits from the structural- These are character animator uh, dynamic links and they're, uh, uh oh, see, this is the problem. Fucking Premiere, although my computer, uh, 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 this computer's about six, seven years old. I'm really happy with how it performs, but boy, if I had a budget where I could drop like four or five grand on a machine, I would be, that would be so cool. Um, yeah. So this is just a uh, character animator, and I just did a bunch of different little animation things. For, the eyeballs sort of like were bouncing around in a way that I didn't, I wasn't doing that on purpose. It's just the way that when, when uh, it uses a camera and it tracks your face and face position. And so if you like lean forward and in and out and stuff. It tries to accommodate that and you can control those sliders and change the intensity and turn it off and on and stuff. So like it moved the eyeballs around in a way that I found really funny. And I, I didn't intend to like stretch out the heads that way. <laughs> There's something really perfect about the way it kind of, the way it works. And then there is a, a scowl face. I don't know if that's in this export or in this link here. Yeah, no, but different, different mouth shapes. Those are kind of fun. Vazims they say in the industry. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. ...to gain leverage. Never more clear than when an executive... Should I have said clearly? I don't think if that's proper. ...clear than when an executive stated they'd let the system force people into destitution, prompting one prominent union member to say this. The motherfucker. Oh, great. There goes the advertisers. Thanks a lot, Ron. Thanks, Hellboy. Now the YouTube advertisers are going to flee my, my content. I am not going to play everything. I do love the, how pissed off he is and how... Um, I hope he's okay with me using this because I think he had to take down that video. Um, but that it captured so well the idea that these guys are just willing to... Because so this was during the Hollywood strike, 2023. The writers and actors were on strike and they were picketing a bunch. And there was uh, things like they'd cut the trees so that the sun would be more painful for the picketers. This is that fighting stuff that I kind of want to return to in this whole thing. Now, Jenk didn't do that. I'm not trying to claim he did, but he uses the same law firm that the people who did that do. So they're probably following a similar playbook, and they probably have more, multiple law firms. I'd be not surprised if it's the only one. And Ron Perlman is a guest, has been on TYT. He's been, he's like a liberal guy, you know? I wonder how lefty he is, but I'm not looking through purity tests at it all. But I would assume, and I'd hope, and how cool would it be if he gets wind of this somehow, and I have this fan. For some reason, I, I feel like a hug from him would feel nice. I saw him when he was at TYT. It might even have been this time. What date was this one? Um, and I, people were saying hi to him, and he was being accommodating. It must be so weird being famous and having people recognize you and stuff. And so he was going through the office. He wasn't like going up to people, being like, "Hey, do you recognize me?" It wasn't no. <laughs> you got to be a real quack to do that. But I went over. I, I'm one of those people. I mean, other others were as well. I, I don't know if I'd be the only person, although there's, there's definitely a good chance of that, that too. But I told him how much I loved uh, Children of Men. That's not the movie I meant to say. City of Lost Children. <laughs> La Cité de, de, La Cité des Enfants Perdus. It's a French movie. It's one of his first movies. I don't know if it's the first, but he plays a strong man, guy with big muscles, uh, who's looking for his little brother. I'm not going to spoil it any more than that. But uh, 
I've lost little brother. So he's running around uh, looking for his brother. And uh, really amazing movie. It's from the 90s, City of Lost Children. Don't uh, go. If uh, Highly recommended. If you kind of get my deal, you'll probably like it, I think, you know, if you trust my recommendation. But I'm trying to not say anything else about it because it's got a, it's, 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 it's worth a watch. It's worth a watch. So I went up and told him and I told him how much I liked that movie. And he was like, oh, he didn't really say it. I mean, he was kind of on his way out. And I didn't expect him to turn around and go like, oh, really? Oh, cool. Cool. Thank you. Let's talk about it. Oh, what's your name? What's your name, buddy? And then starts like stroking my arm. You know, what movie? Why is there a movie where they start stroking? Her? It's a casino. No, Goodfellas. When the guy's wife, Lorraine, is hanging out with the mob wife scene, one of them is just like rubbing her hand, or rubbing her arm a lot. I just that always jumped out at me. She's like talking to her, but she's like, "Oh yeah," and she's you know not her own arm, someone else's. That's good podcasting. Um, so yeah, my dream is that Ron Perlman sees this and goes, "What the fuck is this? Why am I in? okay? Oh yeah." And then he goes, "Jesus, Hank guy's a good editor. I like the red eyes on the boss thing." And then he goes. Call him up. It's. I assume that there's just somebody around him that does that if he says so. Not that I think he's like some like mob, ball, but he might be like tell his assistant to like find me, and then I get a message someday that says Mr. Proman saw your film and he has some interest and he'd like you to meet with you. And, I, and then I'll be like, I don't even have my good sweatpants. I'm gonna go see him. And then he realizes how fucking fat I am and I'm close to having a heart attack. And he goes, All right, buddy, we're gonna get you back on track. I'm gonna teach you how to do weightlifting. Even though he's pretty old, uh, I, not he would probably still beat me up. They cast him as hell. He played hell, and he played the guy in charge of the Anarchy Sons. Okay, this is a scary dude. At least he's good at acting. He's good at acting, scary. But brother Ron, brother Pearl Man, come on, buddy, stand up for some of your union bros. I'm not even in the union. I never made it into the fucking union, unfortunately. <laughs> That's my other dream is that Ayatsi gets wind of this and like the motion pictures editors killed and they go, all right, he's a pretty good editor. Get him. Let's pay him. Some this guy could use a job. And then I have to fucking have a goddamn fucking job. Oh my God. It's the worst. <laughs> so here he says, 27 million. There's a lot of ways to lose your house. You wish that on people. You wish that families starve while you're making 27 fucking million dollars a year for creating nothing. That's right. Now, contrast that to Jenk. Jenk created a business. Jenk deserves credit for the work that uh, went into the TYT. He used other people's labor, uh, employed them, let's call, let's say. He, they, they were paid uh, probably most of the time. <laughs> Uses unta- unpaid internships. So, like, you know, compared to a Hollywood CEO that's just some Wall Street asshole who makes $27 million and just makes decisions about, you know, Netflix or you know, some big streamer company. There's, there are substantial differences in that sense. But uh, I still think Jinx's uh, employment practices deserve scrutiny and uh, sunlight. So uh, all he had to do was tell the truth. Be careful, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. Then I weigh in. Yeah, that's right, motherfucker. <laughs> TYT. See, I diffused the tension. See how I did that? See that? That's called master of communication. Okay. Dana Carvey's the master of disguise. I'm the master of communication. Just look at my career. Motherfucker. <laughs> TYT members deserve to know how much they contributed to this anti-worker industry. Or maybe it's totally fine that the home of progressives helps fund the worst guys in America. And anyway, they lost. Now, this is a bit cluttery. I don't actually like the flow of this bit here. And I intentionally chose a font that's different just to make that stand out because it pops anyway, up afterwards. They lost. That's the kind of stuff I'll spend like not hours thinking. It about. was all. A- um, it's it's uh, it. I think the idea is fine. I don't necessarily. This is low on my list of stuff I might revisit, but like this whole sequence here with the uh, this disaster. Worse than a waste. Disaster. So I animated all that bit. See all these little chunk, these little pinky bits here. Those are the uh, those are the parts that fly fly across the screen they're just little shapes in the uh graphics panel so they're they're just built directly into premiere uh here see what does it does it match frame on that no maybe um it just happens a little too fast and also the other thing about this whole bit let me just play it again it was all a waste worse than a waste disaster get that one star on yelp there buddy you got hosed (laughs) i do like that um Oh yeah, the, 
a different decision would have saved Jank so much trouble. It would have. Me too. And then you see the timeline here. Oh my god, it's like we're doing fractal timelines with this stuff here. The thing about calling it a disaster is that it kind of worked. They haven't unionized the whole company. Now, I'm not saying that that was the intention of the union or that was ever my intention. I think that anybody who starts a union organizing drives or is part of that, eventually you're probably, you know, long-term thinking every, but that's not like you're like this whole company. You're not making like a, a declaration of intention all, all right out the gate. You're just sort of testing the waters when you get going, when you're starting and you're seeing that there, that little core nugget of solidarity between the original people who start having more serious conversations. Cause that's what we did. That's what, when I say plotted to wake it up, I just intentionally brought it up with people who I knew would be receptive to it. That's all that was. And, uh, cause they were fully aware of the working conditions I was facing and it, I knew that it would, it, even if there wasn't interest, it would have been hell, safe and okay to do that. You know what I mean? Like they were cool people. That's the other thing that's so funny about Jank, this whole situation is, you're not the daily wire. Like who, like you're going to get lefties that come work for you. You're going to work calling yourself the home of progressives. You're going to get liberals and lefties. I think I said that in the, one of the articles. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, obviously like you could either lead the union drive yourself. That would have been probably the best, not, not the one we did, but like start a union at your own company, home of progressives, live your principles, make a big stink about it. And, and I think Jenk could have been in like a, a union, the globally recognized union guy. He seems to admire Sean Fain. I think he he, he gave uh, Sean Fain, the uh, union president of the of the UAW, uh, doing a lot of great stuff. People are calling for him to run for president. I'd like to see Sarah Nelson of the Flight Attendants Union or maybe Sean Fain. Uh, people I really admire. Um, more people who I hope, like just like Ron Perlman, invite me over and give me a hug and say, "Good job, man. Let's 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 help you finish this movie." <laughs> Well, I want to see the, I want to, I'd love it if the union organizing, if like the labor movement got a hold of this and was like, all right, this guy seems to be one of us. Let's help him out. Let's promote this a little bit. Let's, let's, but, um, Jenk talks about Sean Fain all the time about how strong he is and all that stuff. And it's just like, yeah, well, you're, you're a union buster. Like you don't like, I wonder if Sean Fain ever ends up on TYT, I'm going to go like. Uh, I'm just going to make a big, I'm going to try to get Sean Fain's attention. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make sure like, dude, you're, you got to know about this before you go on that show. Like not to say he shouldn't go, but like you should, it'd be cool if Sean Fain is the one that goes, Hey, Hey, Jank, you know, I talked to some of you, I looked into your organizing. Like maybe it'd be neat if he talked to Jank about union busting. That'd be kind of fascinating actually. But I, I could, cause I can imagine a scenario where Sean Fain just does some interview on TYT and none of this comes up. And it's just like, that's not okay, man. That's not okay to, to do that. I, there's something, there's something cosmically wrong if that's what happens, but, um, but it wasn't, it really isn't disaster. It kind of worked. Like they still, it seems not that I know anybody's intentions at TYT, although maybe I am making a secret documentary with people at work, Jank. Maybe, maybe, maybe they've reached out to me. Maybe, <laughs> um, but I don't know. Uh, but like, finish the organizing drive. You need to the rest of the company. Live your principles. Put your money where your mouth is. Put 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 their money where your wallet is. Do it. Let's see it. But that's kind of the yellow dot here. Is that it? So I, I'm a little conflicted about saying that it was a total waste because partly what a union organizing drive is like, we're going to make this hard. It's going to be materially and psychologically damaging to the workers who are involved. And that's a, a signal to others that maybe you shouldn't do a union uh, there. That's exactly what Anna says here. From unionizing workers. Because it, it dissuades other stores from organizing. That's why I do that animation. It dissuades others. So really, it's not really a, the loss that I'm kind of claiming, even though it did fail. And it was a waste of money. I assume if they spent money. I don't know. But disaster. You got hosed. <laughs> All right, let's get trouble. Guys, going for me too. By the way, honestly, it would have. I got my little hosp by TYT things in there. That's these pink ones. Let me close this down here. Those are fun. I think everybody likes those. I have no idea. No one's no one said anything at all. <laughs> Eventually, this stuff will probably be on Hoss's stream. I don't know. Somebody somehow, I feel like that would be uh, something his audience might want to see. So there's a fast forward screen. I use Chewbacca hair. By the way, check it out. See Chewbacca. 
I screen recorded it because I knew that'd be that'd be like a secret little thing. I might put that on TikTok. So his chest hair is actually Chewbacca hair. Oh god, there's a beast. There's a monster nobody should ever imagine. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, it's it's Tim Russert in the house, monster. <laughs> This is like the, this is like Total Recall. They've got Quaid crawling around on his chest. Some little creep, creep face. Not he wasn't. Quaid wasn't really mobile though. Quaid was stitched in, I think. So let's put that back. Um, How this lesson was There's this and this. See, but now they're flipped. Oh, one's on the left, one's on the right. Known before Jenk pulled the lever. Sitch and Adam coming up. Mystery. Apparently, they don't teach these kinds of things at the fancy lad finishing school. He is so proud to have attended. Look, I went to the top business school in the world. See? Look at these guys. I never actually looked at what the chat is saying right now. Let's take a look. I never really looked too good. People want that because, okay. Increased taxes, prices for price. Oh, you think you are not the rich, Jank? Someone just wrote MMT. Fair. Good point. All right. Government is bad. Taxes are bad. Giving the government money is bad. Well, I mean, it is their money. They demand it. It's only valuable because they take it back. If they created a demand for their own product. Um, Jenk is the left-wing version of Hannity except Dumber, which is pretty impressive. I don't know. Um, all right. Based, someone says. All right. Okay. That's that's what's in the chat. Yeah. So Sitch and Adam made it into the Union Busting film. Look, I went to the top business school in the world, so they're not going to get anything past me. Hey, Genius Factory. Here's a headline for you. Sorry. I, I killed the moment. God damn it. There goes my... Ver there goes my... Almost said virginity. That's a well. Um, hey, Genius Factory. Here's a headline for you. Mm. This part's great. Well, I, I can say Washington is not ready for you, Shank. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> I just like that. With his political campaign. Oh, and then that's all on a different, different, different timeline that you have not seen. Look at that. Look how clean that is. It was such a fucking mess. That's partly what I was doing to get it fixed up. Um, Yeah. So that's Saga Crystal. You know, Kyle Klinsky, I, I, I fantasize that Kyle Klinsky and Crystal Ball, they're married. Um, That's Kyle's wife right there. And um, they seem like good folk. I've listened to their podcasts a, a decent bit. I'm not like a subscriber who follows every word, but I like, I like their takes. Kyle's uh, held, held the line on his, uh, where he is progressive. I know people always have criticisms. No, nope, not not everybody fits exactly the molds we like to see. Not that you even can think of that for Kyle, but you know the dude. The dude does his thing. Um, so I want Ron Perlman to call me in for a hug. I want Sarah Nelson and Sean Fain to call me in for a hug, right? And I think I'd like to see Crystal Ball and Kyle Klinsky call me in and make me their son. I'm available for adoption. I could use health insurance. I could use some. I could use some nice parents. <laughs> they seem like they'd be good parents. Um. Yeah, so I like I just like this little ending. And the way Sagar puts the pen down, he's just kind of like, oh, shucks. He sort of, oh, shucks it. Well, I, I, I can say Washington is not ready for you, Shank. Indeed, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a little little Photoshop magic right there, King Hypocrite. That's not that's not OG from the game. So this thing is funny, though. I wanted to share this real fast since we're going in on this whole deal here. So this article, this is text from the article. This, is a, this, this piece is... Yeah, these are not. Yeah, these are just straight up. Okay. I did the, I photoshopped this whole. So here's the original. W92 means he graduated. He's, you know, from Wharton School in, in 1992. I'm sorry. Make it bigger. And uh, couldn't stand finance, couldn't get enough of controversy. So this text, this copy is from the article. I didn't do any writing here. It did occur to me to write, rewrite this something. And actually, it's to sell the joke. By the way, Dave Kohler, uh, that's supposed to be a tennis ball. And I tried to match it to look like it's back there, but I did a bad job at that. I need to read. I need to redo that one. The clown nose is good. That's that's fine. I drew that in Photoshop, but like, this was a tennis ball that I modified a whole bunch, and it never really quite works. It just looks like I'm. I don't know what it looks like. It looks like a weird fruit. It looks like some kind of fruit. So sorry, buddy, Dave. Dave, Dave, call me. Let's hang out, man. Let's hang out. You can't. Your contract probably says Hank is evil, right? Uh, so. Here's uh the text is funny though. Jenk Uger likes to joke that he earned a nice business degree from Wharton and a nice law degree from Columbia University, then took these diplomas and crumbled them up. So this is what's originally written. Um so this is a nineteen no, this wasn't not written nineteen ninety two. I'm sorry. Do I have a date on there? Yes, I do. Let's go over here. So this is from this where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. 
cover story by Sharon L. Crenson, winter of 2004. So this is when this was published. Wharton alumni trade business crews for headlines. So, you know, all these colleges have like these publications of their alumni and stuff. So that's what that is. Google. Just found that shit on Google, you know. And so... Second paragraph, it's not quite true. Much to his surprise, he never actually wanted to be a businessman or a, law or a lawyer. His work in entrepreneurial management and political science studies played a, play a big part in his job as a radio talk show host. But he uses them in a most unusual way. Now, here's where the fun stuff is. Uger co-hosts The Young Turks on Sirius Satellite Radio, a show that covers current events from politics to pop culture under the motto, this is hilarious. <laughs> We don't make the news. We make the news sexy. Ooh, what do you do to make it sexy? Do you... I mean, how do you... Do you uh, pink? Something? Lace? What does sexy even mean when in this context? <laughs> so, what is he talking about? Because he covers pornos and stuff like they used to do back in the day and do like crotch shots and stuff. I've seen some of it. I've been looking into some of that background. Oh my God. It's, I'm so embarrassed that I was into that. Like I, I should have been turned off. I should, not that I was turned on, but I'm just saying like, I was more into the politics and stuff as a progressive guy who wanted to see, you know, there weren't any real, uh, very little other progressive outlets, certainly not mainstream stuff, but I saw a lot of that and it didn't turn me off. It didn't send me away. And I, sh I mean, I'm, I'm humiliated. It's, I, I'm not going to beat myself too much about it, but I think that's part of the, the cult, we have to allow our culture to grow, and that means we have to admit that we needed to grow and that we were we should have been grown earlier, whatever, you know, so it's fine. But we don't make the news. We make the news sexy. <laughs> What's, like, because it's him talking to Dave Kohler about stuff? Him and Michael Schur? Like, <laughs> I don't know. What's the sexy part? That's just such a weird phrasing to, like... I'm Tom Tom Brokaw. We don't make the news. We make the news sexy. Barbara Walters is wearing pink. And uh, think of a cross between Comedy Central's The Daily Show and a left leaning Rush Limbaugh. Parentheses. If the Comedy Central reference escapes you, you're probably too grown up to be part of Uger's target audience. The network's show featuring Jon Stewart is something like the irreverent take on the news seen on Saturday Night Live news anchor. <laughs> So they, they do a, a five-line parenthetical explaining what Jon Stewart is. That's who their audience is at the Wharton School of Business. So, yeah, we don't make the news. So then something that is fascinating, and old-timey TUIT viewers, I want you to dig into your memory here a little bit. Go back to those early days and that song. <laughs> All right, welcome to Old School. I don't have it to play right now. In fact, I, I, I've been looking for it in full. Uh, and you can find the lyrics on the Wayback Machine. It is bonkers. It's like, uh, I, I thought he said he, okay. Yeah. The Young Turk Show. And it's like a ska beat. And he goes, didn't, didn't, uh, I, I talk, he had an idea, a talk show. Da, 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 da. But it, it is so, it goes, he rates women, the five tiers, and then the song lyrics go through each of the five tiers and whether or not Jenk would sleep with that. <laughs> like it's in their song lyric. It's amazing. It's really interesting. Um, and looking back on it, you go, oh yeah, that was really not, it's, uh, yes, that's, that's fascinating. So. Thanks. Indeed, yeah. Bing. All right. So let's jump back. Uh oh, I on. We're having fun. This podcast is going to be like a several hundred hours, it feels like, already. And I'm going to carefully move my mouse over here to this chunk. Now, this is not even necessarily related precisely to or, a, I mean, it's related to, but it's not about Young Turks. But it's in the film, meaning it's about the theme of of bosses and power and ultimately the solution in our planet the, the the thing we need to do in order to get a grip on the the failure of leadership at at uh, system wide to keep the planet habitable for human life which the people currently calling the shots are not doing 
we have to upend the, the antagonistic relationship between workers and bosses. In other words, we have to get rid of the era of bosses, in my, in my opinion, in my opinion. Uh, there will always be shitty work, but we can get rid of bad jobs. And the way you get rid of bad jobs is by asserting control and asserting uh, democratic processes over work where workers get to have more control and agency and influence over the working conditions, if not ownership of those working conditions. Not That's not a switch you can flip easily. I actually have some thoughts about the, the, the transitionary thing we need to do. I call it corporate mortality. I think it's, I think if you start a company and you make a ton of money, fine. But when you die, there's a process that kicks in where um, we intentionally shift ownership into more collective management. I think that's a nice middle ground, whatever. That's a whole other side point. I, I put a whole bunch of stuff up on TikTok about it like a year or two ago. <laughs> All right.